Good morning, Nick Aston here. As I go on my morning walk, it's uh, summer's here apparently. Uh, anyway, I, I've been getting back into uh, blockchain quite significantly, and uh, you know, I've spent the last couple of years really focused on AI and quantum computing and things, which uh, you know are really interesting. But let's just touch on uh, blockchain and where I think we are. Um, series of short conversations about uh, state of play. So let's uh, let's start with the big one. Let's start with Bitcoin, shall we? So what's going on in Bitcoin? Well, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm largely disappointed, really. Um, Bitcoin has been clearly usurped from the original Satoshi paper, which was you know, defined a payment system for the people, really. And, uh, and that's been hijacked. I mean, that's long gone. And uh, we also have, you know, the old, the old problems appearing where those with the most resources and money uh, are actually creating a centralization effect on Bitcoin. You know, we've seen the centralization of hashing, hashing concentration in, uh, in China. And, um, and also, strangely, isn't it? I mean, China has just uh, laid down some regulations, which means they're all getting up and leaving. So there is a moment in time to sort of, you know, redistribute some of that uh, hashing power. And a lot of it is going to North America, yeah, where there's cheap energy and lots of capital. So there's still clearly money to be made with, uh, with Bitcoin, but it wasn't designed as a store of value, of course. Bitcoin was designed as a payment system. And therefore, you were meant to be able to, in a peer-to-peer -peer sense, move very small amounts of, of, well, it's difficult to say value because the token doesn't really represent value, but let's call it value. Uh, and you were meant to be able to move these small amounts, person-to-person, -person, wallet to wallet. <clears throat> and I guess you can still do that, but Bitcoin has been usurped. It's now a not a token as such. It is is being held as a store of value, like a like a, I don't know, an artificial gold, if you like. I mean, yes, there is difficulty in mining Bitcoin. You know, you have the, uh, the mathematical challenges, the, the hardness of the... But, I mean, you know, that, that's, let's just remember what, uh, what a blockchain is, what a Bitcoin is. It's, it's a ledger where you just write token movements down. Uh, and that's it, really. It doesn't have nothing else really going on. And of course, the mining is is a slightly different thing. So big, big Bitcoin, small Bitcoin. One is a smart contract, that's the token, and the other one is obviously a proof of work consensus algorithm, which uh, I still prefer. But uh, but let's look at uh, the power. Really, the uh, you know, we know we, it, it, you consume enormous amounts of energy to mine a Bitcoin, which. Uh, Many people uh, see as a problem holding back its adoption, but uh, the the Bitcoin thing itself is, yeah, it's a, it's a real problem because if you if you have enormous capital, yes, you can go into Bitcoin mining, and it is still very profitable, and it will remain so for some time. And uh, but it comes down to hashing. You know, if you give the the S9 or S19 ASICs, you know, they, they process, you know, millions of terabytes. Uh, but in the original uh, Satoshi concept, of course, you were meant to be able to compete to identify the transaction, uh, create the block and, and write the block for the reward. And in the original paper, of course, you were meant, be, meant to be able to do that with a laptop or a Raspberry Pi or something, not just those people with the muscle of ASIC and mining, uh, the muscle and the capital and the energy and the scale. Um, clearly that is not what it was intended to be. So just a few thoughts on, uh, on, on Bitcoin. More to come. Bye for now.